Hello, fungi friends. I'm going to go ahead and cook up some awesome mushrooms I've got. I have these beautiful golden chanterelles here. These current gills that run down the stipe. Uh, they're white flesh inside, and they're pretty friggin' solid. Uh, this is Cantharellus californicus. It's the oak chanterelle. And I grabbed a bunch of these about a week ago and washed them off, otherwise they were quite dirty, but they're, they're pretty good now. I let them dry overnight and put them in the fridge, and they've been stable. I've also got some cauliflower mushroom that I've was a big lump, kind of a lobe, and I've broken it up into kind of like egg noodle-shaped uh, pieces, and I've soaked them a couple times in water and tried to pull out most of the pine needles and other little bits of stuff that were on them. And I'm going to blanch these. And I've also got this absolutely gorgeous lion's mane that I pulled about a week ago. Uh, same day I got the chanterelles. And it's getting a little fuzzy on top, but I'm just going to give it a bit of a haircut. And I'll sear off a couple of pieces. This is such an amazing mushroom. And it's so good. It has this wonderful sort of seafood-like texture. And a very mild mushroom flavor that I find really delicious. And sort of a, a unique smell. Uh, so anyhow, I'm going to get cooking here. Uh, I'm also going to try and experiment. I got some unsalted butter and some whole milk powder. I'm going to brown my butter and add extra milk solids and then control the uh, salt because this is an unsalted one. So I have a couple of different projects going on. Um, first thing to do is just to blanch the cauliflower noodle and I'm going to cut up the chanterelles. So. Uh, I'm gonna, I have like more chanterelles in the fridge, but for these right now, I just kind of want nice big pieces uh, that I can use for, for something else later on. I'm not sure what else I'm gonna do with these chanterelles, but I'll cook them fairly plainly now. And the way to cook chanterelles, which you'll see, is that I do what's called a dry saute. Uh, and I do not put them into the pan with any oil or butter because chanterelles are quite wet. They have a lot of moisture inside of them. Uh, even, even if you never wash them and you only brush them clean, painstakingly brush them clean, they still have a bunch of water in them. They're going to get all soggy. So don't worry about crowding the pan. Don't worry about not washing them. I highly encourage you to wash your mushrooms. Uh, like I said, what I did with these is I brought them home. While they were still wet, I ran uh, water over them and then laid them out on some paper towels and just let them sit out overnight and really dry out. And then in the morning, I packed them into some uh, paper grocery bags and layered them with some paper towels. And then I put that in the fridge. And in that way, they'll last in the fridge at least, uh, at least a week, week and a half, two weeks kind of thing, depending on how fresh they were when you picked them. So that's, that's really my advice for chanterelles, because they can be such a pain in the ass to clean, especially if you're sitting there just again and again kind of uh, brushing them. I've, I've done that dance a bunch of times, and it's never been worth it. They still taste like dirt. Uh, even after you painstakingly try to brush all the dirt off, it's, I think it's just better to just wash them. Just clean them with water. That is fine. They're mushrooms. They sit outside and get rained on all the time. It's okay if they get wet. I do not worry about that. But you're gonna see what I do. My trick is to uh, put them in the pan with no oil or butter, do that dry saute. It's a pretty universally known technique by most mushroom people, but I find a lot of people who are like still getting into mushrooms don't know that. And certainly that was the kind of the biggest like leap forward in my understanding on how to cook chanterelles, because for years I think I've been trying to cook them, but sort of the same logic of like sauteing them in butter the same way you see everyone cooking mushrooms, right? You put a bunch of butter and oil on a pan and saute them. And I was like, why am I always getting these kind of like gross, soggy, insipid chanterelles and they, they don't ever seem to get nice and brown like I want them to or, you know, the way they look at a restaurant. In a restaurant, they really do just like torch them in a super hot pan with a ton of butter. They're doing a very small number of chanterelles per pan. It makes much more sense to do this sort of dry fry method to cook all the moisture out and then add your fat. Uh, you get a, a easier to cook them, you can cook a lot at a time, and they turn out great. So here's my big pile of chanterelles, 
and my cauliflower. I'm going to cook both these and we'll come back to browning the butter and cooking some lion's mane too. So let me get my stuff started up here. Uh, I think I can just turn this around. So check that out. That's pretty sweet. All right. I think you guys should be able to see both of these pots at once. I got a new streaming setup, but it's, it wasn't necessarily any better than what I was already using. Um, okay, there's water. I'm gonna salt it a little bit. So just a nice little plop of salt in there. Um, salt is really important for cooking mushrooms. It's definitely one of the most important things you can do in terms of seasoning a mushroom, but also cleaning it. Salt helps remove a lot of the, like little bits of dirt and bugs and other things in there that you don't want in your mushrooms. So. The cauliflower, it doesn't really need to cook for that long, but it also can't really overcook. So I'll probably give it roughly five minutes or so. And here's my shanties dumped into that nice, nice warming pan. Nice, look at all those chanterelles. And then uh, it's gonna be sort of just a processed. Ooh, that pan's hot. Okay. <laughs> just watch these cook down for a little bit here. So these chanterelles, they look really dry right now, but you're gonna see I'm not gonna add any water. I could add some water, I'm actually speed things along, but they're gonna get all soupy on their own, and that's totally fine. I'm gonna just cook it and cook it and cook it until all that water comes out. Okay, I'll leave you guys just to kinda hear the noise of the oven. A little sizzle there. good stuff. Oh, of course, the uh, chanterelles need a little bit of salt. There you go. So chanterelles are getting all kind of soupy and soggy. That's totally okay. We're just gonna keep cooking them. Have faith in the process. And these these guys have shrunk up a little bit, but that's okay. Their their texture's kind of set. I'm gonna let them just go like another minute or two, and then I'm gonna pull them off and put them in the fridge. And I can use these as a sort of a noodle substitute. 
or I can just saute them in butter. I might put a little bit in the brown butter I'm gonna make just to try them out, you know? Sorry, I just had to uh, run my garbage disposal for a second. Nice and soupy, but that's good. All that water, don't pour it off, it's flavor. I see a lot of people talk about pouring off the water when you cook a mushroom. I don't, I don't like doing that. I like to cook it down because I feel like it concentrates all the goodness of the mushroom. See all the color and stuff in that water? That's all flavor. If you pour that off, you're missing out. So, this, in theory, you could save this water and use it as stock what I boiled the uh, cauliflower mushroom in. But there's also a lot of junk in it, so I'm going to just toss it because the, the heat has probably killed the spores. And, uh, and there's just still bits of, you know, <laughs> forced stuff in there that I don't want to eat. So, I'm going to dump them and rinse them and uh, then save them. So, I'll show you them cleaned up in just just a moment here. I'll move you guys over so you can focus on the chanterelles. There you go. Here's Here's what the sparassus looks like all drained off. So that's great. I want those just keep cooking down. That's looking good, but I'm going to hold off on adding any butter or oil to this until all that water's gone. I'm using a non-stick here so that they won't stick to the pan. You can also use cast iron. Um, Chantrolls won't stick that bad anyhow, even if you're using a, a stainless steel pan. But they're starting to look pretty good. I'll give just a tiny another pinch of salt there. Mushrooms are worth seasoning several times. I kind of treat them like a potato in that most food you want to season about 2% by weight sea salt. Um, that's the same ratio as sort of sea water. But potatoes and mushrooms I find are pretty good around like 2.5, almost 3% by weight salt. So I like potatoes and mushrooms a little bit saltier than the rest of my food. Makes them taste more like they should, you know? That's kind of what salt does It's kind of what salt does from a molecular perspective in your mouth, is it increases the dissociation constant of aromatic molecules in our food. 
so that when salt is present, our food tastes more like itself because that's <laughs> that's what you're tasting. The salt is helping the aromatics in the food come out more easily and taste more like itself. So another thing I'm doing here is I'm just putting a little bit of neutral oil on right now. That's a little bit of sort of a highly refined peanut oil. And this is gonna help me kind of develop some nice browning on the chanterelles. But since I'm not actually cooking these up to eat right now, I'm cooking them to kind of preserve them and save them for around Christmas when my folks are here. I will finish them with a whole bunch of like butter and garlic and thyme and sherry and all these things to make a really delicious kind of chanterelle dish. But for right now, I just wanna like slowly brown them and develop that flavor. Which is also what I'm gonna be doing uh, beside this with a whole stick of butter and some of this whole milk powder, which I saw this technique online and I really liked the idea. Because when you brown milk, uh, you get these incredible brown milk solids, but you don't get very many of them. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work to get these delicious brown milk solids. And apparently you can hack it by just taking like a stick of butter and putting on a bunch of this milk powder and, uh, and getting a lot more brown brown butter stuff going on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try that, and I'm also gonna try dressing some mushrooms with this incredible brown butter that I'm gonna be making. Okay, that's good. Chanterelles are getting close, and then once they're done, I'll pull them out and we'll fry up a piece of lion's mane and hopefully dress it with some delicious brown butter. So the cooking techniques here I'm using are, are pretty simple, uh, and like most things simple, they're very dependent on doing things right and doing things in a particular order. So can you put a bunch of chanterelles in oil and butter? Absolutely. Are they going to lose a bunch of their water and kind of dilute it all into a soupy mess? Yes, totally. No matter how few or how many chanterelles you put in a pan, they're going to they're gonna put water in there, whether or not you washed them or whether or not you just completely dried them and brushed them kind of thing. It's They're going to bleed water because they're full of water. That's what chanterelles do. So I really like the dry fry method. It's a good way to cook all that water out. And then when you put do put the oil in, you start getting nice browning like that. Uh, the chanterelles aren't kind of wet and slippery. They're nice and meaty and solid. Okay, I'm gonna pull you guys back out here for a second. And we're gonna look down at, uh, at our butter and our chanterelles here. So the butter is starting to bubble away a little bit, which means there's still some moisture in there. I think when we brown butter, we wanna cook most of that moisture out. Um, I think this is a good time to add a nice big heaping spoonful of milk powder. So I'm gonna try to brown this milk powder in this butter and really create a hardcore brown butter with lots of those really, really delicious milk solids. But I'm gonna kind of carefully manage my heat here. I didn't have any salt in here, so I'm gonna put a solid pinch of salt in. milk powder usually for baking as far as I know sort of like bulk bulk stuff up but uh, I really like brown butter so I excited to try this out so we'll just let that kind of happily bubbling away I guess these, these are getting really beautiful golden brown oh man so yeah, like I said, these will be excellent. Even if I put them in the fridge and let them sit for a couple of days, I can take them out and finish them off with a nice hit of, uh, 
of butter and some sherry and some thyme, all sorts of good stuff on those beautiful chanterelles. And here's my butter that is, uh, is browning. And there's some sprassus. We're gonna switch back to the board and go cut up a little bit of lion's mane and get this ready to fry in a pan. Um, sorry, let me just get this straightened out. I don't know why. I feel like YouTube always adds a weird color to my videos, but. So I've got two lobes here. I'm gonna kind of cut into one lobe of this lion's mane. You can see a cross section here. It's pretty good, huh? There's a little bit of like junk inside. I'm gonna take my knife and just try to clean that up. Don't really want to eat eat that dirt. It was on a log, so that's part of why there's sort of dirt inside of it, because this is the part that was touching the wood. Sort of two parts of this lion's mane. There's like a little back part growing behind the log, uh, or like in a, in a crook of the log, and then this other part was kind of spilling out over the log, the big part. Uh, so here's like the little back part. Here's the part, and it was kind of, the log was like jammed up in here, so see it was growing out like that and there was sort of this weird little hole in there um, you can see it on on this this part too anyhow it was a cool it's cool lion's man it was a really beautiful one in a very nice shape uh, I found another one uh, maybe it was two weeks ago and this one was about a week ago uh, that other one was not quite as nice as this one but it was very exciting to find find this beautiful one so, ooh, I gotta stir my butter. Don't let that burn. Yes, ooh, that looks really good. I'm, I'm gonna turn my butter off here because I don't have enough time right now to really manage this well, but this is getting beautiful and brown. Woohoo! Brown butter is looking amazing. Very excited about that, but I want to focus my attention on cleaning this guy up. And I turned my heat off my brown butter so it won't, won't go over. I don't think it's fully browned out yet, but it is close enough that I will burn it if I don't pay full attention. So just picking this off. Tiny bits of stuff here. I could wash this off, but it will get it wet and be harder to sear. So I'm, for this one right now, I'm just gonna pick it dry. If you buy commercial lion's mane, it's almost always completely clean, doesn't re really require any cleaning. Um, some wild ones like this will be kind of like brown on top, and I do like to trim off uh, some of that brown stuff. I find it can be a tiny bit bitter, and it's usually a little bit soggy. So you can take lion's mane and slice it and give it a, a press, almost like you would like tofu kind of dry it out a bit or you can just do a nice hard sear and that'll that'll do the same thing I'm just kind of cutting off here the parts that are a little bit soggy and a little bit discolored trying to get down to that like more white part and then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cut some steaks out of this thing Let's see how thick we want them to be that's a nice thick piece yeah lion's mane cooks down quite a bit when it is cooked so cutting nice thick slices is a good way to kind of really keep the structure of the lion's mane and give uh, give the texture a chance to shine and these like end parts. If I cut this anymore, it's just gonna turn into a bunch of little teeth. So I'll keep it and keep sort of a nice thick nugget of this. Um, and I like these lion's mane steaks. I put them on uh, breakfast sandwiches. It's probably my favorite thing to do with them. I think it's really, really delicious. Whoa, oh, this has continued to brown. Okay, wow, I'd say that's that's probably exactly where I want it to be in terms of browning those amazing brown butter solids. Holy cow. You guys see this? Look at that, it smells like hazelnuts. So like brown and toasty. I'm glad I turned the heat off when I did because it definitely carried through browning all those milk solids. That's a lot of milk solids. Ooh, that's sexy. Okay, let's cook some mushrooms so we can have some milk solids with our sexy mushrooms. 
radio. I'm gonna pull my cast iron over here and get this thing start to heat up. Uh, maybe I can dip a chanterelle in a little bit of brown butter here. Is that a, is that a thing? Ooh, that's hot. Lots of hot stuff. Hot stuff coming through. Ooh. Okay, yeah, this uh, butter, the pan full of butter is quite, quite warm. I don't want that to touch anything important. Ooh. Mmm. Brown butter solids. Yeah. That looks good. Let's give this a tiny little sprinkle of salt, too. Just a little salt bay action. Glistening chanterelle. Brown butter solids. <laughs> oh my god. Mmm. Wow. Yes, it really does kind of remind me of lobster a little bit. I mean, just because butter and lobster always make me think of each other. But there's something about the texture of chanterelles that makes them very sort of seafoody. Mm. Oh, wow. They're a great pairing with crab and matsutake. I've done several iterations of, uh, of chanterelles with crab in different interesting ways. I mean, like chanterelle cupcakes and stuff them with a uh, crab, mayonnaise, and matsutake mixture. That was pretty awesome. All right, hang on, let me just get this turned around. Sorry about the awkward camera work, but it is coming around for you. Can I get something on my lens? I'm sorry, hang on a sec. Put my greasy hand. Okay. A little better. There you go. So we're going to lay our lion's mane into our pan. And they're pretty nice thick pieces here. And I'm just going to try to slowly render them out. Again, no oil or butter in the pan. This lion's mane is quite wet. If you are cooking cultivated lion's mane, you really don't need to do uh, this same dry uh, step quite the same way. It still does benefit the mushroom, but it's not as important as when you're working with a, uh, a wild specimen that's, that's quite wet. I mean, this one is just like exuding moisture. You can hear it squeak. So let's just make sure they get a little bit of a crust, don't stick too much. Now, something else I'm gonna do. I have a potato here, and I microwaved it a couple days ago, so it has been par-cooked. Uh, and I think I'm gonna just kinda toss it in on the edge here. Actually, this is gonna stick. The potato will stick, the mushroom won't stick. And you wait till I put some oil in the pan, and then I can go ahead and, uh, and sear my potato. See, I really like to cook mushrooms with chopsticks. That's kind of my preferred way to articulate stuff in a pan. I'm get a chance to kind of gently flip this over, developing some color. I'm not trying to burn them or anything like that. A nice little bit of browning is, is perfect. These little kind of tendril pieces will will stick if you're not careful. Oop. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, let's see, I'm going to grab a little bit of non-brown butter just to Give these guys a little bit of fat. I'll 
finish him with the brown bar. But. So Lion's Mane doesn't have, you know, these are pretty wet, but they don't have anywhere near as much moisture as the, uh, as the chanterelles did. So, sorry to add a little bit of fat now. To keep them from sticking. Just keep them moving a little bit. Help the uh, transfer of heat into the mushroom. So you really can't like overcook mushrooms either. I mean, you can definitely burn them or like fully dehydrate them. But the more you cook a mushroom, the more nutritious it gets in, in many ways. So I think a lot of people are used to from vegetables, the idea of like not cooking or minimal cooking of your vegetables because you don't want to waste the nutrients. And in, in many senses, breaking down the mushroom with heat makes a lot of those nutrients in the mushroom more available to you. And otherwise, you can't really digest them super well. Uh, so it definitely behooves you to cook your mushrooms better from a digestion standpoint. You will feel better when you eat them. Uh, it'll help them be more bioavailable, so they'll be more, more nutritionally uh, relevant to your body. And then there's bacteria in your gut that can like help to break down the actual mushroom fiber and are really good for you. The bacteria that eat mushrooms are associated with positive health outcomes. So you gain a lot from eating mushrooms. Um, lion's mane in particular is one that has interesting polysaccharides uh, that have a lot of hype of, around the health benefits of them. I'm still not totally convinced that they're as amazing as people say for like regrowing your brain and stuff like that. But I think just from the sense that they are tasty and amazing mushrooms, uh, I would say that <laughs> with full confidence uh, and encourage everyone to eat lion's mane, especially because they're kind of a mushroom. When people say they don't like mushrooms, I'm like, have you tried lion's mane? Because it's so different texturally and flavor-wise from, you know, your standard sort of portobello mushroom. It's a, it's a polypore, it grows on wood, it's, it's just completely different. It doesn't have any of those same kind of earthy overtones of, uh, of your standard portobello cremini button mushroom kind of thing, or it's, you know, it's very different from a shiitake, it's very different from uh, a chanterelle, it's very different from most mushrooms, a morel, anyone that people have tried, there's not many mushrooms like uh, Parisium or lion's mane out there, so they are fairly unique in terms of their flavor and texture, uh, and I, I think they're really, really good. So, anyhow, I'm going to scoot these to the outside of the pan. And just on the inside of the pan here, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, a little bit of this oil, and fry my potatoes here for just a moment. I have some sort of thin sliced potatoes. I went ahead and uh, microwaved these the other day, so they're sort of pre-cooked. They don't need cooking, cooking per se, as much as they're going to pick up some some color and some texture, and I'll put a little bit of uh, my house seasoning on them, maybe a little pinch of salt, and yeah, you can throw onion in here, cook them down with potatoes. I'm just, I don't really need to make myself a snack, but I'm like, I'm gonna cook a, cook a potato, why not? <laughs> Make a nice little crispy potato. I may regret this because cast iron is mean. certainly not a non-stick, but I think if I get these potatoes kind of crust up a little bit, they'll they won't stick too bad. That, that piece looks a little sticky over there, but I'll work it off with my chopsticks. The skin there will help it keep from sticking. Got a little bit of oil on there. And I have all this beautiful brown butter over here.
those potatoes. Yum, yum. I forgot I need, I need to actually salt these lines, man. I didn't do that. Normally I'm militant about salting my mushrooms, but I, I forgot, so. Could be part of why the lines, man, didn't bleed as much moisture as I thought they might, because I forgot to salt them. It's okay. It will still take on some seasoning pretty well here. And I'm careful to not burn anything here. So I kind of started out on high heat and I turn it down to a little bit closer to a medium low. Some crispy bits in the pan, don't let them stick. And a bit more salt. A little lion's mane here. I'm going to take just a little piece of cauliflower and fry that up too, just for a moment. is looking. I don't know if I want to wait for this potato to really turn crispy, but it's cooked already. I just want to eat, eat some potato and mushroom and butter. <laughs> Late night potato butter mushroom snack. That sounds all right. Would be better if the potatoes were totally brown and crispy. Yeah, but they're getting kind of Kind of nice in the pan here. Taking on a little bit of crisp in color. And I don't want to add a ton more butter because I'm going to be putting brown butter on them too when I finish them. So. Yum. Yeah, all those little bits of lion's mane kind of mixed in with potatoes there make a little bit of hash. I'm looking at the mushroom hash here, you know. The vibe. I'm gonna toss in just a chantrelle or two there for my little snack to poo. So, put a tiny bit of brown butter. And you guys gonna let it cook in for a second. Get like this lion's mane. One more, one more flip. And I got them seasoned up. Come here. I could certainly put some garlic, some onion, all sorts of other stuff in here, but I'm going to keep it really simple and plain, just let the, the purity of the, uh, the butter and the mushrooms and a little bit of potato kind of shine through here. So I'm going to grab my potatoes out, I stack them in my, stock them in my bowl here, as close as I can. Good stuff. 
Scrape up all the brown bits. Nice little squeakies. Last bit of moisture out of those. Mm. There you go. Yeah, I'll cook it on here. Yeah, hear that little whimper that it gives. <laughs> All right, great. Cut the heat. Yeah, and I'll grab this nice big piece of lion's mane here. Okay. So we got our lion's mane, we got our chanterelles, and we got our sparasses. And now we're going to do a little taste test. So hang on, I'm going to get you turned around here. One last look at the mushrooms on the stove. We're going to look back at the board here with our nice lion's mane and our brown butter. Get the phone plugged in. There we go. Boom. All right. Turn this back in the right direction. Okay, so we had our lion's mane, we had our chanterelles, we had our cauliflower mushroom, we browned some butter, we put a whole bunch of brown butter solids in it. Now I've got these beautiful mushrooms, and I'm gonna just <laughs> yeah. hit them with some of these beautiful brown butter solids. I mean, these are just milk solids that I added to the butter, but you know, a little extra pizzazz, and we'll hit that. We're going to hit that with just the tiniest bit here of flaky salt. Just a little textural, crunchy contrast. And because potatoes and mushrooms like salt and butter. So, I bet my midnight snack is better than yours. At least tonight. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. The deep, rich savoriness of the milk fats with the like nice meatiness of the chanterelle. Oh, that's really good. A little this potato. Mmm. Wow. Yep. That works. Here's the sparasis. So this one can be kind of crunchy and a little bit citrusy. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. It is crunchy. It's got a little bit of like Almost a sort of a cartilage-like thing going on when you chew it, but in a good way. And like I actually chew some like cartilage, which can kind of be gross. Um, mm, that was good. Oh, that's nice. I try a nice big piece. A lion's mane it's supposed to be good for your brain. <laughs> for me, it's just just good for my diet. Mm. <laughs> wow. Look at that. That's so rich and meaty. Shrimpy, too. I mean, honestly, these little, like, frondy things kind of remind me of shrimp. Mmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's a hell of a snack. I like all the brown butter. That is something. Wow. Probably shouldn't eat all of this, but, um, <laughs> mm. it'd be hard not to. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool. Lion's mane to food. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me cook some mushrooms, talk about how to cook them. Uh, I'll post this here on YouTube, so watch it later. Hey, it's Gordon. Uh, if you'd like to learn more from me, please check out my website, fascinatedbyfungi.com. I'm on all the different social medias. I've got an Instagram, a Facebook, um, TikTok. On my website, I've got cool merch. I've also got a Patreon, if you'd like to subscribe to that and get access to some of my recipes or updates from my book. Uh, I have a podcast. It's here on YouTube. It's also on Colin and uh, all the other major podcast platforms, Apple, Google, etc., uh, Spotify. And I have a whole bunch of mushroom discounts. It's probably a little late to order stuff for Christmas, but if you are interested in getting into mushroom cultivation or you want to cook with mushrooms, all sorts of stuff, grow your own, 
um, you can do so. Check out my website, check out the mushroom discount page, and you'll see lots of great links on there. Anyhow, I'm going to take off and wish you guys a wonderful night and much love. May you have fun cooking your own mushrooms this holiday.